The show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Gloves Are Off. I'm Moses Wolden and we're pleased to be joined by these two fine gentlemen, of course, Greg Cannon. As always, my co-host. Hey, Moses. And we're pleased to be joined by this gentleman, Brendan Bosler, of course, the co-host of the Lloyd FM Morning Show. Of course, you also have another show later in the evening, uh, Tuesday Night Sports Show. Glad to have you on here, man. Hey, Taking the time. I'm happy to be here. Anytime we can talk sports, I'm uh, always willing to be here. So happy to be here. Awesome. All right. Well, people who aren't uh, quite happy at this moment are the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, you can see they're fans, maybe. Friday night uh, got devoured by Edmonton. And really, all facets of the game, special teams, defense for the most part, and particularly the offense, which could not muster anything. I think there was 100 yards or less than 100 yards total passing. 27 from uh, Mr. Sanceri, uh, who was the starter. And now it's looking like uh, there isn't a front runner for that job. Are there big concerns right now in Ryderville, uh, considering Darian Durant, although there are talks that he might be throwing a ball in the next two, three weeks, uh, couldn't get him in fast enough? Obviously, there's concerns. I mean, you look at the last three games, and there's huge concerns. But I think the biggest concern is they don't have any other options. Yeah. You know, what are you going to give up to get somebody else to come in and throw the ball for three weeks? Because, like you mentioned, Darian's coming back. Sounds like October 24th, which means, I mean, it's a couple more games. He'll be back for the last two. I mean, I think if he is coming back and they know he's coming back, you just fight it out. So as a GM, Brendan Tamman, like any other GM, is doing his team a disservice if he doesn't try to fix the problem they have, and that's a quarterback. But what price do you pay? And right now they're talking that they could get a quarterback in. It's going to cost them Rob Bag. Could cost them get slapped. We're talking about Henry Burris, right? But well, we're Ottawa, talking Henry. Talks, we're talking Nick, Matt Nichols is the other one. Right. Kerry Joseph of all guys is another one that they're they're talking that he may come to Regina but you know what do you do you pay a long term price for a short term little gap control right now to get ready for for Darian I that's I, I think right now they're going to have to bite the bullet be happy with what they have and, and try to go forward do, do you we, think they can win with those two guys or at least kind of weather the storm for the next 2 3 weeks say once Darian is ready and can be in the lineup no. I don't think they have a chance against no. Calgary this Friday. They don't have a chance with Tino. But Sturridge. the thing is that we, we like to blame one player for all their problems. That one player, Tino, as, as bad as he struggled offensively, at the same time their defense gave up close to 400 yards in rushing. Yeah, so, but Greg, when your defense is on two and outs every time, they're so tired they can hardly breathe, and then they've got to go back on the field in 30 seconds? They, they when still you're not have, getting any offense. Doesn't, but they it still, doesn't help, though, when the very first drive after the Riders got stopped on the third down, when Edmonton had possession, the first play was a running play that became a touchdown. Then well, all of a sudden, a yeah. couple plays later in that first quarter, there were quite a few gaps. I don't know if there was no spy, but Mike Riley just kept drawing all the time and hurt the Riders okay. so yeah, yeah. on quite a few second and long. So I, you thought that the game, like 17 nothing after the third quarter, can't blame that on our defense. It should have been 40 to nothing. But I question some of the, even offensive coach, George, George Cortez, the decision he made, third down and gamble, a third and two, I think, or third and one. They, and that was a, a gamble they made early right in the off, game. They yeah, turned right it off the ball yeah. over and the Eskimos come down. Now you have a young quarterback that is still not feeling the game himself. Tino, really look at it, prior to Edmonton, he played six quarters of football, correct? And, uh, uh, yeah, eight, starting eight quarters. Anyways, yeah. Starting. Yeah. Started. Played that good half in BC. So he, he played one good half against Ottawa in that second half. But the previous six quarters, the four in Hamilton and the two prior in the first half against Ottawa at home, he looked horrible. So we come out of Ottawa thinking, you know what, uh, he played two good quarters, but he played four lousy quarters, or if not more. Which, I mean, you can expect when a guy's first starting. But now it's at the point where you've got your reps. You've got a few reps. You need to improve. He hasn't improved. One thing I've learned, though, is, you know, you listen to different fans and media types at the start of the year saying how overrated Darian Durant was. Can we just all agree that he's the most underrated quarterback? Yeah, he's... Because he's name one team... Underappreciated. Be as, yeah. Name one team in the CFL who would be as bad as Saskatchewan was without their starting quarterback. I'm not saying they would be good, but I think every other team has a guy that's a little bit better that would have done a little better but, than. But so many they, other but teams. But they have veteran, quarter, veteran quarterbacks. So that's what we're missing. Because look, at, if you look at Kevin Glenn, for example, in BC, that's definitely helped considering Lule is now going to be out until the playoffs. Uh, you look at Drew Tate. As much as you want to say he's a band aid, 
He's not a bad quarterback. He's been in that system and has had success. And then you look other teams as well that have kind of been in that situation. The only I, team I can if, think of is Toronto. If you want to throw daggers at somebody through all this, is Riders management for not having a good backup quarterback for Darian Durant. Or getting I rid think of they Willie. believed in Tino. You know, they oh. honestly That's did. what they got I rid of Drew Willie. Honestly. Yeah. Did. Well, Drew Willie, the he, reason they got rid of Drew Willie is because he had an opportunity. Yeah. Because of how he looked last year. Same as Zach Claros in, in Toronto last year. Toronto, you mentioned Toronto being the other team. They're the one other team that might be in huge trouble if Ricky Ray goes down because they don't have their backup like Caleros they had last year. So. All right, guys, we're going to move on to this. Uh, how about the Ryder Cup? Uh, you talk about uh, disarray amongst teams. Well, for the third straight Ryder Cup, it's now in the hands of Europe. Uh, Phil Mickelson was asked uh, in an interview uh, post-game about what was the difference between that 2008 team that won for the United States and the last three. And he said, well, it came down to leadership. And, of course, uh, you might he didn't take it that way or didn't mean it that way is what he said. But it sounded like he was taking shots at Tom Watson, who was the captain uh, for Team USA this time around. Guys, uh, what do you think of the words that were said uh, by uh, Mr. Mickelson? Uh, towards uh, why how or why they played so badly uh, during those four days. I think it was an out yeah. in the heat of the moment. You know, you just lost, not even really close. You know, it could have been more of a blow than it was. It was a heat of the moment thing, and I don't think you can just blame your captain. I mean, I look at professional athletes in a sense where how many golf tournaments have these guys played? They get paid to make golf shots. I don't care who your partner is. I don't care who you're paired up against. You get paid to go out there and hit the ball and be a professional golfer. So to blame it all on the captain, unless there were some serious problems that were behind the scenes that nobody knows about. The last I looked, Phil Mickelson's a veteran golfer. Uh, he's been around for a long time, and he's questioned leadership on that team. I know you have a team captain in Watson, but at the same time, leadership comes from within, like any other team. And you know what, if you're questioning the leader, you're, you're questioning yourself, Phil. Well, I, I think he's, he's not holding himself accountable for the results in the course, and he wants to pass the buck. I think you're right. I think your golfers who are your veterans, you know, your Tiger Woods in the past when he was in his prime, those are your leaders as much as your captain. But as, uh, those are the guys the that go out there and get the final call was by Watson. There were some plays, of course, with uh, Jordan Spieth and his group, very young. Uh, did very well, especially to, to open up the whole, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole series, right, with the whole Ryder Cup. They were kind of left by the wayside. Was that an error in judgment by Tom Watson? I don't know. Maybe he just had a feeling that he'd go with the guys with more experience. Maybe that's what his mentality was. Nine times out of ten, when you go more experience, the results will pay off. Uh, did he, he kind of rolled the dice a little bit and decided to go with the experienced guys and not the guys that were on a roll and the young guys, and it didn't result in you know, a win a, for them. E Europe was a better team. Yeah. You look at the players, you match them up. Europe was predicted to win, weren't they? Like, I, I thought that was kind of a obvious thing that the U.S. was underdogs and they didn't win. It was heat of the moment. It's ticked off. All right, guys. Uh, when we return, we're going to have more Gloves Are Off. Talk about the still available unrestricted free agents in the National Hockey League. Plus, is the New England Patriots' domination in the NFL over? Well, stay tuned.